Hi everybody, this is Holger Obenaus and this is one of my master HDR tutorials and I'm going to show you how to incorporate HDR technology into commercial photography. Hi everybody, before I get started with the master class I would like to give you a little background information about the picture we're looking at today. It is probably not a very spectacular picture but the job was kind of challenging because the room I was shooting in was very limited in space. So I only had one position for the camera and I did not have much space for lighting equipment. Basically I knew that I had to create the ambience and the atmosphere of the room at home in Photoshop. So I decided to shoot with an HDR approach even that the picture did not necessarily require HDR. I wanted to have several different exposures of the room in order to get my desired results. So let's have a look and let's see how I created the pictures. I saved my images from my Canon EOS 1D Mark III and I'm opening them up in DxO Optics Pro 5. I'm using this basically as my RAW converter. I use a DxO preset vivid and sharp and I say apply and I go process and I edit where I want the pictures. I export them as a digital negative file, a DNG, because I want to have still a raw picture for my HDR software Photomatics. And I choose the directory, save it and start processing. The reason I'm using DxO Pro as my RAW converter is that I found that the preset works flawlessly and gives me a better image control, a sharper image with my HDR software Photomatics. I open up my Photomatics. And I OK it. And to make sure the camera didn't shake when I took the seven images, I click Align Source Image by Matching Features. I always click Reduce Chromatic Aberrations. And in this case, I click Reduce Noise. And since it's a completely a still image, I do not click anything on the ghosting artifacts. The reason why I'm working in sRGB is that the client who has commissioned the shots uses the pictures exclusively in the internet. That's why I'm staying in this color space with the whole procedure. All right, here we are. This is the HDR picture, but we need to process it. And that's the mapping. Now I have different choices and I usually try out what I like best. And I use the gamma slider to set how light I want the picture. I want the person who looks at the picture to say, oh, I want to stay in this hotel room. I usually raise the saturation in the shadows a little bit. I have a certain setting for the micro smoothing and the highlight smoothness which I kind of keep in that parameter range and it works pretty well and this looks pretty good for a start so let's process all right here's our finished HDR picture this is not the finished product now I save it as a 16-bit TIFF file I have opened up the file we have just processed in Photoshop CS4. Now I want to point out that my main goal is to create a picture which is as natural as possible. The main problem you have when you merge pictures into an HDR picture is that very often you get a color cast which is like a certain tint in the picture even if it was not on the original 7 or 5 
files, on the raw files. The first part of my job is to color correct the room or the picture so it looks as natural as possible but still keep a warm hue to make the room look sort of cozy and nice. I am using NYX software Color Effects Pro 3.0 and there's a wonderful little plugin it's called Pro Contrast and it automatically as you can see removes the yellowish tint in the color contrast and I have of course the option with a slider correct color cast to see how much of the yellowish tint I want to be gone. So I press OK. Now I'm trying to fix our problem we have on the left side of the picture where the, the, the bleeding light from outside creates this, this extreme blue on the headstock and also colors the yellow wall. So I'm using the same plugin again and what I do is I take the color picker and I use for my white some of the matte in the picture which turned pretty blue and we can see what happens to the picture. What I want is basically to get this greenish blue here to be gone and to keep that nice orangey yellow hue on the wall which gives the room more warmth. So I click OK and I got my new um, layer saying white neutralizer. Let's apply a mask. Take a brush and I make it for the for the start I make it pretty big and I take 100% opacity at that moment because I really want to exchange the whole part out here. So I start, you know, with that part and just paint over white. I will take away the blue tint on the lamp and on the side of this leather. In order to get the gradient from the left side to the room a little bit better, I'll go back to my big paintbrush and then I go down more 30% and just smoothen it out here so it really kind of blends in and I do a little bit on the bedspread and if I look at the before and the after the room has a more consistent look 